So I'm going to go over a bunch of wiring here. If you guys don't want to see all that because it's about 12 minutes long, just skip to right here in the video. All right, so I ordered the um, Holly Sniper Sif Lot. <clears throat> These come in two different v versions. They got one version that will plug directly to the OBD2 port, and it, it just works. Or you can hardwire it in, um, which I've elected to do because I like to data log my car going down the track, and you can't data log and have the shift light hooked up at the same time. So that's why I've opted to go that route. Now, the way to hook these things up, you got the white dash lighting 12 volts, which I thought maybe this maybe dimmed the light or brightened the light. I hooked one of these up to Christopher's car and I put 12 volts on this and it didn't do nothing. So I didn't even use that wire. So the red, volt, red wire 12 volt accessory uh, ignition on power, uh, black ground, yellow, green stripe to ignition so i've ls swapped my car so now we need need to go need to know where to put this yellow green stop wire down here in these directions it says negative side of coil um cool control wire cool trigger wire i guess you could do that right at the cool if you wanted to but i don't want to cut into the harness right by the coil um afraid it might make a short or something I, you never know and then the cool not fire you have a miss I don't know. I don't want to do that anyway. But So what I do is I go into LT1Swap.com. Um, not sure why this is called LT1Swap.com because it has information on the LT1 vehicles, the the uh, Vortec um, small block Chevy Gen 1 vehicles, um, the LS, the LS vehicles, etc. So this is the home page. And then you go to wire or harness info and see it's got 1992 to 97 LT1, 96 to 99 Vortec motors, 98 to 02 Camaro Firebird. So this is the one that we want. So now if you've done an LS swap in any vehicle, and this works for the TAC, is this works for the TAC or a shift light. Um, you come in here now the um, We'll go into the PCM connectors first, but I'm going to show you something on the body harnesses as well. But um, the 98 is a little bit different. The pinouts are a little bit different on the 98 um, F-body uh, computers and the GTOs as well, I think. I think the F-bodies and GTOs, I think the computers are the same. I'm not 100% sure on that. But this is for the 98 um F body um, says 97, 98, but that's no, it's actually it does say right there Y body F body right there 97 through 98 Y and F body computers. So there you go, that answers our question right there. So um, engine speed is probably what it says. So on the 97, 98, it is blue pin connector. On the computers, there's these they're marked blue and red. It's kind of hard to miss, but um, yeah, it's blue pin 35 on a 98 car. So if you LS swap a vehicle and it's a 98, 97, 98 ECM for a, from a YRF body, you would use pin blue 35. That's That would be for the TAC and that would be for a shift light. Now, mine's a 98 through 02 ECM, so that one's different. It's actually, I already know what it is. It's red 10. See, red 10. So if you uh, <laughs> swap the car and you're using the 99 through 02, it'll say that up here. Well, I guess it don't. 99 through 02 F body only. These are the blue red PCM connectors pinouts for 98.9 through 02. But mine's a um, 99 through 02 ECM. So um, if you LS swap a, a car and you want to hook a tack or a shift light to it, you would take it straight to red connector pin 10. Now, <clears throat> I made my harness work with all the gauges in my factory gauges in my vehicle. 
everything in my vehicle works except for the low oil level light, which oddly only comes on once on a blue moon. Uh, the oil pan that I got, it didn't even have a hole for that, and I'm, I'm not going to put it in there. And you can, there's two wires that go to that sensor. You can actually wire them together and light it never come on. I did not know that when I was redoing my harness, but I am going to get back in there and run those wires together so that light never comes on because it, it, it comes on sometimes and sometimes it don't. It should stay on because I don't even got it wired in, but either way, sidetrack. Um, now, on the F bodies, 99 through 02, um, they come off different pins from the computer, but they run to the same place. Um, on these cars, they, they actually go to the, uh, you see these C, the ones that start with C1, C, see that one, C100, C101, C105. If they start with a C and a 1, that connector is located on the passenger side fender well in the engine bay. And uh, you'll see right here. So on the um, on the 99 through 02, the red 10 pin runs to this connector, which is the the uh, C105 passenger side engine bay fender well. It's the uh, it's the black 10 pin or that's 8 pin, ain't it? Yeah, the black 8 pin connector. It, it runs to uh, pin D, and then it runs through the body harness over through the, by the fuse box and it comes back up in the car somewhere to the tack and that's how that works and it's the same on 98 through 02 F bodies it just comes off the computer different on the on the 98 ECM what was it blue 35 on the 98 ECM and then uh, red 10 on the 99 through 02 ECM but now <clears throat> when I swapped my car I redid all this so these connectors on my car, they're completely different. See, the tack, for instance, the tack didn't go to the body harness on the passenger side fender well. It, it went to the uh, under the passenger side kick panel. Would you see these ones that start with C2? Those are the ones that go under the passenger side kick panel inside the car. See, for instance, mine has three of them that go under the kick panel, the LS uh, 90, 98 through 02 cars. They've only got two, and then um, they got three of them on the fender well. Now, I don't know if the 98 has three of them on the fender well. One on one. They do. They have three under the fender well. And see, they've actually got three under the dash. The 98 does. And then uh, the 99, the 99 through 02, whoops, wrong button. 99 through 02 has three of them on the fender well and then two under the dash. <clears throat> so anyway, what I did was I took, I went into here. This is shbox.com. It's got all the information for 4Gen LT1s that you could ever think of. Um, that's the home page. You just click right there. You go right here. And then you go right here, engine wires, connect, connector faces. So again, same thing. The, these are tabs down here at the bottom. Uh, the C, the ones that start C1 again are the plugins on the fender well on the passenger side in the engine bay. The ones that start C2, they're underneath the dash. See on the LT1 car, they've got two on the in the on, in the engine bay on the passenger side fender well, and it's got three under the dash. So when I did my harness swap and I've got a video on that what I did was I went in here um, I went in here and I found all these plugins and and for instance like the engine speed uh, which was red 10 so typically that one went to the passenger side fender well on an LS car but I ran it here to C230 under the dash because that's where it goes on my car it went it went from the computer um under the dash under the passenger side dash and then went to the uh to the uh, to the tack whereas on a ls car 98 through uh, 02 it, f body it, it went from the computer to the to the passenger side fender well in the engine bay and then it ran through the body harness over to the fuse block on the driver's side and then back to the uh back to the uh, to the tack somehow. I'm not 100% sure how that worked. But anyway, on my car, um, I took that red 10-pin connector, 
right here, and I ran it down to this uh, to this uh, ten ten yeah ten ten blue connector underneath my passenger side kick panel, and I ran it to tachometer signal right here, boom, right there. So the way I'm going to wire mine in, I'm just going to go under the dash, find this tachometer signal <laughs> D on the blue connector, and I'm going to wire that. To the yellow with green stripe and then you know switched on power and ground boom done that's why i'm gonna do mine but now if you've swapped a car and you want um you want your um your tack to work and it doesn't have like the feed like that to the body harness or under the dash or whatever and you have a 99 through 02 ecm uh, for camaro then you would run it to the red 10-pin connector. If you have the 98 ECM and you wanted to install a tack or a shift light, then it would go to the blue 35 connector. And um, all these pinouts are a little bit different depending on the type of computer. So this is the 97 through 98 YF body. So if you're using one of those computers, blue 35. If you're not using a 99 through 02 F body computer, it would go to red 1010. Again, tack or shift light. But um, any computer that you're using, you can find information like this online and figure out what pin it is. But um, but uh, this is how I'm going to wire it in. I hope some of this information that I've given you here helps you on understanding. Um, how how to wire these in and how to set it up but but again i mean you can go to the negative side of of coil i'm not going to do all that i'm not going to do that i'm going to come off that wire off the computer now on these ls cars the way the ignition works and stuff like that whoops um i guess you're apparently supposed to set it to four cylinder and it, and it, it's just the way that they work um, and and that 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 should get your RPM dead on. So we'll we'll check that out once we get it set up in the car and all wired in. I will go over how we wire it in. But uh, I hope any of this information helps y'all out. All right, we're out in the uh, carport. We're gonna get this uh, get this shift light um, wired in. And here's the wires, and just like we mentioned in the instructions. Um, this is the yellow with green. No, honestly, I don't even see a green stripe on it. Maybe I'm just blind. Let's zoom into it. <laughs> no, it's just a yellow wire. And then red hot, black ground, the whites for the light switch. We're not even going to use that one. I, I didn't even see that wire make a difference when I installed this on Chris's car. But yeah, yeah and we're going to under uh, install it underneath the dash. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the best place to put it. I'll probably just wire the wires down through that big hole. All the heating and cooling has been taken out of that, this car, so it should go right down in there. So I'm going to try to decide if I want to put it on the windshield or on the dash that's falling apart or up here on the supper dash part, which that's like a corrugated. I'm not sure if it'd stick to that, but... Let's see. All right, so we're sitting in the car, and uh, you got this little mount. It's got this sticky back on the bottom of it. I'd kind of like to put it right there. But now you see how this is corrugated? I'm not sure how good it'd stick there. It'd stick really good to the windshield. But where the windshields in these four Gen F bodies is so slanted, I'd have to put it way down there. And you do got to keep in mind that when you put this thing in, <clears throat> you want it to where you can reach it because there's settings on it right here that you got to do. Sometimes you got to pull it out and you got to leave enough wires. Dog barks at everything. <laughs> so you got to keep that in mind. So I'm going to try it. I got some extra double sided sticky bag. So if it doesn't stick there. Then I'm going to stick it way up there, I guess, on the windshield. But I'm going to clean this with alcohol real good. 
and uh, dry it right there for now. If it comes loose, we'll, uh, I don't know. Could probably put it right there. Hmm, decisions, decisions. I don't know. I'm going to think about this a little bit. So I elected to go right there. I use some isopropyl alcohol and clean it off real good. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but if you loosen these screws, these are adjustable. You see the teeth? It's adjustable there. And it's adjustable back here with this screw. But um, if we put it right there, you don't need no adjustment. So let's take the sticky back off of it. See how it sticks. All right, there we go. It's mounted and it's sticking good. It actually lifts the dash up. That ain't going nowhere. And that, the uh, the cover on that sticky back, it was hard to get started. I cut my fingernails the other day and couldn't hardly get in there. But, uh, yeah. And then the, uh, the shift lock, got to make sure this is up. And it just slides right in there. Just like that. That's what we're going to be looking right. Boom, right in your face. I like it. And then we'll run the the wires back under there. I'm going to take that kick panel out. Because that, that 10 pin blue connector, uh, C230 pin D, it's under that kick panel. Look at that. That's falling down. I'm going to have to fix that too while I'm down there. And then we'll wire the yellow wire in there, and there's a stud right to the top left of that speaker on the under the kick panel. There's a ground stud. That's where we're going to ground it to. And then I'll run the power wire back over here. I've got this thing right here. It's keyed on hot. That All that feeds is these two gauges, so it'll be fine to feed that one as well. That's got a 20-amp fuse in it, and it's got a pretty big wire. In the back of the uh, of the fuse box there, so that'll power all these three easily with no problems. But yeah, let's get started on that. All right, if you're um, working on 93 through 97, you probably want to take this out if you was working on a 98 through 02 F body also because you're gonna have to run some wires through the uh, firewall, but. There's just some screws in this kick panel across the door trim here, and mine's missing most of them. But yeah, you take those out, let's just pull right out. And then we're gonna take that out also, just to give us some more room to run wires through. Besides that, kind of broke off, I need to fix that. And that's just held on with some screws up inside there. If you can see it. Can you see it? But anyway, yeah. This one has the screw right there, which it come off of it. I'm just gonna put a bigger washer on that and hope it holds. And there's another one over here somewhere. Yeah, right there. That one right there. So we'll take those out. All right, I got the uh, kick panel out from the side and the top there and there's that blue connector right there c230 we need to tap into pin d and there's a good ground stud right there and uh i took the wires up i stuck them to that i'm gonna place that dash that's on my list to do guys but um yeah leave you enough wire because you gotta pull that out of there and be able to do settings on it so Make sure you leave yourself enough wire to be able to do that up there. And, uh, yeah. So, we're just going to take this yellow one. Run it to pin D on that blue connector. Probably do it up here at the top. Uh, we'll run the black over here to this ground. And then we're going to run this red all the way over there to them other gauges. One bought me one of these wire strippers from Advance. It works pretty good. I already tried it on a couple of wires. Yeah. 
stick the wire in there. You adjust this for the big wires. I guess you loosen it up, but stick it in there and it strips it right there and this holds the wire. But yeah, it's, uh, it's too, just too hard to get them wire crimpers in there. You gotta squeeze and spin and squeeze and spin. It's too hard to get it in there, so. 16 bucks, I've been wanting a pair of these anyway, so yeah. All right, so I went ahead and connected this connector. I wanted to do it up here. This is too hard to get up in there. It's gonna be easier to reach this one. So we know it's a white wire. And right there, D, that wire, wire right there. So we're gonna cut that back down here somewhere. Then we'll strip the wires. And we'll run that yellow wire to it. But yeah, that's the C230 10 pin blue connector. And there's the other connector. And I um, put the uh, shift light right there just so I know how much wire I need. And I'm probably going to leave a little bit of slack here. And uh, we'll just cut that wire. And. Uh, Tap that in here with one of those melt solder wire things right there on pin D. And again, if you've got a 97 to 98 Corvette computer or a 98 F-body computer, just run it straight to the computer to, to pin blue 35, I believe it was. And if you have a 98 or... If you have a 99 to 02 computer, then you run this one to red 10 on the computer. That'd probably be the easiest way to do it. All right, there we go. It's all tied in together. Right there, it's one of them little solder things. I'm gonna plug it back in. I'm gonna start the car and make sure the tack still works. <laughs> all right, let's make sure the tack works before we go any further. Now we gotta do the power and ground. All right, ran the ground wire right there. That's it right there. And I went ahead and put this back on. I ran the red wire through there. You can see it a little bit. I put some washers on that so to hold that better. So you ain't seen a bunch of wires through there like before. But yeah, it's that bolt with a bunch of washers on it. And see that tab, it goes up under this side. And then that bolt goes in. Yeah. Now, we'll just put this kick panel on. And then we'll go to the other side and hook the power up. But, uh, now, the, earlier in the video, the C100 connectors I was talking about, those are the C200. They start C200. Um, the C100 connectors, they're up here. There's these things right here. And, um, there's the computer and if you pull these covers off these are just covers you'll see in there <coughs> where it plugs into the computer you can't see it from here but oh, it can. We'll, we'll know. you'll see red and blue on these connectors and uh, again 97 98 Corvette ECM 98 F body ECM B35 and on those as well as 99 through um, 02 F body computers, which is red 10, red 10, 99 through 02, 97, 98 Corvette, 98 F body, it's blue 35, but they run over here. And you can, that ignition wire that comes from your tack um, or from your shift light or anything, you could just wire it in to the prong that we said it was on one of these, or you can just, you know, find it on the harness itself and tie it into there. But now 93 through 97 F body, it comes off the computer and it goes down here. So probably better off doing it down there, in my opinion on those, but 
if you if you're doing just a swap you could just run it straight to the computer but you know like i said 93 through 97 f body it goes from here then it goes under the dash that wire and then um 98 through 02 f body it comes off the computer 98 is different b35 on 98 uh, red 10 on if i remember correctly like earlier in the video it comes off and it goes up here and this is the body harness it runs up here it runs through there and it goes over there to all them wires over there and then it goes inside the car somehow somewhere i'm not sure but uh yeah that's how that works but um let's hook the power wire up and do some settings in the shift light the shift light tack whatever you're hooking up now on on originally on these computers you would set it to four cylinder but now my tack doesn't read the same as you know an ls car tack does so i had to do some changes in the computer to make my tack read correctly so i'm gonna have to use use a different setting in that shift light than four cylinder i'm pretty sure so we'll have to experiment with that after we get the power wire hooked up now I got that all back together over there. Looks pretty good. Now here's your fuse box. I use these little things right here. It plugs into the fuse box and then that bottom fuse takes care of what was there. And then this top fuse does this one right here. Now the way that you can find which one of these is keyed on hot is turn the ignition off and use a voltmeter and they've got these little prongs on the back of them right here. You just probe those prongs. You know, you got to ground one side of the multimeter, put it on volts, and then put the red side here and see if it reads volts with the key off. Check them all. And now, and, and remember the ones that did not read volts with the key off. And then turn the key on and see which ones read volts with the, uh, with the key on. That's going to be your, your keyed on. You can just use one of these. And I got this run down. But it goes down. It comes back up. It feeds these gauges. And I'm just going to take this uh, panel off right here. And I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to tap into that. With that red wire there. From the shift light. Alright, so this is the red wire from the fuse box. It goes up to the ethanol sensor there. And over here, this one right here goes up to the uh, wideband sensor gauge. And then this one runs over here to turn the relay on for the, uh, the bottle heater for the nitrous. And this is our wire from our shifter, our shift light. And look at that. And, I'm going to try to take all this off and put it right in there with those. If not, I'm just going to cut it right here and just tie it in right there. It won't hurt that. It's just a 10 amp fuse, but this just does a relay and then it does two gauges. And uh, it'll be the shift light. That'll be, those don't pull hardly any amps at all. So that'll, that will be fine. Okay, so I just tied it in right there. That's got that heat shrink on it. I can't can't get that off. So I just tied it right there. One of those solder things. You melt it. I just brought it right in with it. Now, let's turn the key on. Make sure it should come on. Right there it is. It's on. Now let's go ahead and... Uh, Put this back up there and we'll get in the car and we'll uh, figure out what setting it needs to be on. All right. So on the directions here, you got program mode, you got shift point mode, and then you got recall peak. Just recalls the max RPM. Then the shift points, of course. There's LED brightness setting in there. And um, if you can't get it to work with the settings that are in there, inside of it, you can do this program mode. Start engine and power up shift light. Press and hold button for two seconds to select the um, PP 
our menu program um, bypass all available PP settings to by tiling through all available 0 0.5 through 6 PPR options select the last option and hold the button for two seconds you will see 1.0 1000 rpm display on the screen toggle the button up and down to have LED read out match your engine rpm and you you're doing this while the engine is running once LED readout matches engine rpm let shift light time out for five seconds and save settings um, display will flash two times so I mean this is pretty pretty easy the way this thing works let's turn the key on so it'll pop up you just tap these buttons that it recalls the peak rpm that's the shift point and then the led brightness once you get it to the one you want and you can use either one of these buttons to toggle through once you get to the one you want, shift point, we're going to hold it. And then you hold it for two seconds, it brings it up. And then you set the shift point, which we're going to leave it at 3,000 just for testing. And then you just leave it alone, and it'll time out and flash. See? And it set that. And then I'm going to do the LED because I want it as bright as it'll go forwards as bright as it goes it's pretty bright and then it'll flash and it sets that and then um, then we'll go to the program mode what's the display I don't know what that one is oh the display is for if it's going to read RPM right here that's what that's for I want it to read RPM right here and then we're going to go to program mode. Hold it. So there's four cylinder, five, six, program nine. See these go up and down. Let's put it on four. Just to see what it does on four. I'm curious. We'll start the car. Well, I thought since I had um, changed the settings in the computer to make my tack read correctly, I thought that that it wouldn't be set on four cylinder mode anymore. But um, put it on four cylinder mode, it's 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 right on. I, I'd say the shift light is more accurate than the tack. These tacks, they they don't read right, and uh, the tack to the shift light's reading about a hundred off. But uh, that's going to do it. Y'all uh, like and subscribe and have a great day.